last time you did. I did it last time. So hey, um, the, uh, you clicked on the title of the video and it told you that we were going to be talking about our games of the year. Maybe it said the top five. If it didn't, I mean, I'm sorry, but we're going to do five. Five. This is shit that we've played this year. We haven't played everything. My number five, alright, I'm going to start this off, I'm going to set it off, with NBA 2K14, it's a good game, I had a lot to complain about it, and the my career mode kind of sucks sometimes when people aren't too competitive like myself, but the, uh, I, I don't know what you call it, in other games it's franchise, but I don't know what they called it in this game, like, it's like a franchise, you start a franchise, that's pretty fun. You know, the Bulls are doing pretty well for my franchise now. It's a fun game when you're not getting your ass kicked because the setting is way too difficult for you. But, NBA 2K14. Okay. Mode of 5, Splinter Cell Blacklist. This game is really fun. If you're into those, the, you know, Assassin's Creed, Hitman-style, stealth-based games, then this is a game for you. It's really cool because, like, you can pick between, you know, doing lethal takedowns or non-lethal takedowns. And they just make it set it up so that, like, you know, you can go Ghost, which is to not kill anybody and not get detected. You can go, there's a thing called Panther, which is you can kill, but you still can't get detected. Or you can go Assault, where you can just go out and just murder everything. And it's really fun. and It's one of the, some people might think it's the most minor thing. But the coolest thing of this game is the fact that, like, you can shoot lights out. Or, you know, affect the lighting of the area. And that adds to your stealth. I think that, I just think that's awesome. You know, we talked about the multiplayer in our, uh, you know, other in our game awards video. The multiplayer is really fun. Spies versus Mercs. It's a completely cool experience. And then the co-op is fun. You know, you can go through the same challenges as a single player with your friend. So that's why Splinter Cell number five. Batman Arkham Origins is what I have at number five. Yeah, I have my complaints with this game. It has a little bit of lack of innovation, but. In terms of games that I've played this year, it's still one of the best ones. I mean, it's still really fucking fun. I mean, the combat in this franchise is just phenomenal. How it's just kind of free flowy and just how you can incorporate your gadgets into the combat and just wreck everything. And yeah, I mean, Gotham City was good looking. It was fun to explore, even though it was glitchy as shit. But like, you know, the the crimes that you could. Uh, help, you know, stop, um, the Enigma Towers, all the side missions that you can do, and this story is by far the best part about this game. The story is so good in so many ways. I mean, if you like incredible superhero stories, I mean, this is right up your alley. If you like Darkham City, boom, this shit rocks. Um, I just love this game. It has its faults. But it's still a very good game. So number four. At Tomb Raider. Holy fuck. Tomb Raider, man. Um, Tomb Raider, my surprise of the year. And one of the highlights of 2013 for sure. I, I was expecting nothing of this game. And I just I couldn't stop playing it. Um, it is so good. Graphically, it is amazing. Um, all the different, you know, tombs and areas that you could explore um, like uh, like the beach or some of the jungle environments are just gorgeous um, uh, you the combat is phenomenal um, how I, I always thought that you know getting experience and upgrading all your weapons and getting new skills was highly addicting it was this light RPG element that was just fantastic um, the story was really good. It wasn't the best thing about it, but it, it, this game had those, like, summer blockbuster movie-type moments that were just over-the-top, out of this world. Um, it, it, it's just, it is a really good game. I thought the voice acting with Laura, watching her evolution, being part of it, I guess you, I should say, was fantastic. Tomb Raider's a great game. Play it if you haven't yet. I have Arkham Origins for my number four. Oh. And, you know, a lot of the same reasons Tyler said, I'm not going to go into that, but in my opinion, the story is, in some ways, better than Arkham City. 
It's very. It does a very good job setting up all the other games. It plays its part very, very well. That's a, the main reason why I love this game. And uh, yeah, they didn't really innovate the combat too much, but they didn't fuck it up, which is you know a good thing. They added a couple new things. They changed how combat went, and you know those the new gadgets were really fun. And I almost like the slight little RPG element they added to it, where now. You had skill trees in a way, in a way where you could upgrade your stuff. You had to upgrade this in order to be able, able to upgrade that. It just made the, the progression so much fun. And like Talos, being able to navigate the entirety of Gotham was fun, even with like the occasional glitch or game freeze or something like that. But it's just overall, it was a, one of the f most fun experiences I had this year. I beat it in three sittings. I, I couldn't put this game down. So that's why it's my, my number four. I had Grand Theft Auto Five for number four. Um, I don't even know how it really made my list. Uh, at first playing it, I thought it was fun, and then I beat the game, and it's exactly what you think of Grand Theft Auto. I mean, I, I'm not not many people haven't played this game or be watching this video, but I mean, you know how you know how it all went, and um, you beat the game, and at least for me, I had enough money by the end of the game to pretty much buy almost everything that I wanted, all the stores and everything. I completed all the side missions, and I did that in under two weeks' time. And since then, I mean, yeah, you could just start over, but I haven't wanted to play the game at all. I haven't even wanted to start it, start over the game. I just haven't been able to touch it since I beat it back then. But the, the graphics are awesome. If I have played it, i played it for like two minutes, and... I don't know, just not a lot of replay value in my opinion, but I mean, it was a good game for, you know, while it lasted, I would say. Number three I have, Pokemon X and Y. Um, I think they're good enough to put on the list because I, I generally enjoy Pokemon games. I mean, it's something that I enjoy, so of course I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to get my enjoyment out of it. There were things that could have been done a lot better, but... I still feel like this is the third. These are the third best games in my opinion, just because it's a new world of Pokemon. It's new. It's new fun stuff to do. And yeah, while there were those, you know, not so good things, there were a lot of good things about this game that I, I did enjoy. And if you haven't played it, I highly suggest picking up the game because it is fun. You will get your fun out of it. I mean, it's not the most fun you'll ever get out of a Pokemon game, but it's worth it. It's it is what it is. Here I think number three. My number three was GTA V. You know, I really enjoyed this game for, you know, the graphics, which, you know, are obviously the first thing you'll notice. The gameplay, at least compared to GTA IV, was so much smoother and much better. I love the characters. They had a wide range of characters that they introduced in the game. And whereas the story might not be the best thing, I feel like the character development was really good in this game, that it, everything progressed really, really well. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the heists, just there's kind of like, in a way, endless things to do with the random encounters that happens. You can kind of always find something to do. If you sat down, you really wanted to try. And then GTA Online also makes the game really fun. They took the GTA 4 multiplayer, which was fun, and just upgraded it. You know, it's got its problems. There's some things that they need to put in, but I mean... They'll come in after a while, and I've just had lots of fun playing playing this game. It's been an extremely, extremely enjoyable experience. So, my number three, GTA V. My number three, I had Grand Theft Auto V as well. Um, I mean, this is the first Grand Theft Auto game that I beat the story. This is the first Grand Theft Auto game I think I've put more than probably eight hours into. Um... This was a really good game. It, graphically, I feel, you know, it's one of the best on uh, PS3 and Xbox 360. It just pushes everything to an extreme. I mean, when you, you know, hijack a helicopter and get on top of a skyscraper and you look down on, on Los Santos, you can see, you know, all the cars going by uh, on, the sh on the highways and there'll be little dots. Uh, it, it was just, it's phenomenal graphically. The story was good, it was engaging, it, but it, the longer it went on, the more it kind of lost me in ways. It was okay, 
Um, I just thought that Trevor and Michael constantly arguing towards the end of the game was fucking annoying. Um, but the three characters were really cool. They were all distinct. I enjoyed all of them. Trevor is crazy. Uh, Michael is, you know, he's kind of a cock. And Franklin's just, he's chill. I enjoyed playing as all three of the characters. Uh, but the mission varieties, uh, the things that you did in each mission, the humor in the game, uh, you know, some of the kind of social issues that they tackled, like on the radio or anything like that, um, it, the, like he said, the heist are just phenomenal. And it plays so much better. Um, there's, you know, lots to explore and lots to see. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of in Sam's boat. I haven't really wanted to play this game as much as I wanted to when I was playing through it. Um, I have went back and, you know, played a little bit of it, but not as, not as much um, as I thought I was going to. However, I have played Grand Theft Auto Online, which is incredibly fun, like Keith said. Grand Theft Auto Online really makes Grand Theft Auto 5 a much better experience. So yeah, number two, Bioshock Infinite. At first while I was playing this, I thought it was going to be the game of the year. I had no clue how anything was going to top this game. Um, it, it, the story is so good, and it's such a mind fuck at the end, but then, you know, once you sort through everything, you're like, wow, like, that is some top-notch writing from the guys over at Irrational. Ken Levine is a genius, and this is one of the most gorgeous games, too. Uh, the first time you pop up into Columbia, you, you're just, you're in awe at this city that looks vibrant and it's colorful, and the way it just deteriorates throughout the whole game. Comstock is a very great villain. Elizabeth is another she is a great companion to go along this journey with. Um, all the different gameplay elements, the vigors, how Elizabeth can open these tears uh, to really change the battle, um, the skylines. This is such an enjoyable experience that I feel that any fan of video games really needs to play. Um, and if you haven't, you're missing out, man. Bioshock Infinite is fantastic. Well... My number two was also you fucking stole my thing. Maybe <laughs> it's Bioshock. Boy, stole yours. Maybe Bioshock Infinite. Again, everything Tyler said. This game, it's a nice breath of fresh air. It's one of really only two shooters that I've played all year. The other one being Call of Duty. And this one turns kind of be a shooter on its head. You know, you get guns. Guns are actually kind of different. And then you know, you get a. Uh, the goddamn Vigors, which are fun, and then you can upgrade them. You see, Combine so them. much to do. Like, there's so much of the world that even, because I did a pl my, my playthrough of it, that I didn't even explore. There's, I don't know, I just, I kind of went through the story and didn't do much else. But there's so much, like, that you could probably look for in, you know, all the collectibles and whatnot. It's a great story. It's one of the better stories of this year, in my opinion. And it's a nice comeback, because, you know, I've heard, I, I, I just got like the, I mean, I played the original Bioshock, and I haven't played Bioshock 2. I just got the pack where you get the Bioshock, Bioshock 2. But apparently, that wasn't that good. So it's a nice return from Irrational Games to kind of like the original Bioshock, and they changed it up. And supposedly, you know, the new DLC is okay, but, you know, I'll probably get that eventually. But this game is phenomenal. There's a reason why this game took six years to make, and it really paid off. Yes. My number two is Tomb Raider. Some games that are, I guess, based on movies more so than an actual game kind of fail at being enough of a game for me. But I feel like this movie, being based on you know Tomb Raider movies or just the entire history of Tomb Raider, I mean, it had a lot to live up to, I think, and it definitely met those expectations for me. It's fun, I mean, for a change, being a badass woman and just, you know everything that you go through in the game is just fun. I feel like graphically it's awesome and what it's going to look like on the next generation co or current, whatever, Xbox One and PlayStation 4, that's going to look pretty cool what they do with it, all the little tweaks and everything, but overall I feel like 
it's definitely second best of the game, second best game of the year, and I'm I'm content with second. It's it's very very fun, and um, you know that's what it comes down to. Uh, my game of the year is The Last of Us, um, just because. I mean, if you want to know more, I, well, you can watch a review of it. Um, but it's just a quality game in in a world full of games that just you know, don't always add up, or they aren't always what you're looking for. I felt this game is definitely what I personally was looking for in a video game. And, uh, I mean, you look at a lot of the games nowadays, like Call of Duty, Halo, and there's Years of War, and there's Bioshock, and there's a lot of, you know, first-person shooters, or these, you know, sort of futuristic games. And this kind of, you know, took a bit of a simplistic, you know, direction, I think. And it had a lot to live up to being a game about a zombie apocalypse because you know there's enough games about those, there's enough movies about those, but it, it succeeded in every possible way that I could have thought. It, it definitely, yeah, it, it definitely. That's how I would describe it. My number one is Tomb Raider. I love this game. Again, it kind of like I, with the it was a surprise. I kind of didn't know how good this game was gonna be. I saw it at E3. I think. It must have been 2012. It's like, oh, it's kind of cool. I might get it. And then I heard the day it came out, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Tomb Raider. YOLO. Yeah, exactly. YOLO. And then, yeah, it was the, one of the best choices I made all year. Was it? It was. Buying that game was awesome. It had that, it has that urgency. That, like, I don't know, playing Call of Duty Ghosts that I didn't have. Playing Call of Duty Ghosts, I, it took me, uh, like, four or five sittings to actually get through the entire game, where I probably got through Tomb Raider in two or three. Even, like, in the game itself, there's a lot of sense of urgency. One of the last missions of the game, you're fighting your way up to a temple, and you realize, oh, there's, like, 20, 30 enemies in your way. This is gonna be fun. Is it? Yes. It gets really fun. Because I know you haven't gotten that far. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't gotten that And then it's... Either. This is, like, you know... And I know it, pro it probably copied a bit from Uncharted, but this is like, I haven't played Uncharted. I don't know, this is like, you know, action movies on steroids. There's shit blowing up, there's planes falling out of the sky, you get attacked by wolves. You get, you fall on a spike in the first ten minutes of the game, and you're injured. I'm just like, that's Lassus a fun has that. Well, what do you mean, what? Lassus has that too, you oh. fall on something and it hurts you. It falls, bum, and it hurts. But it's like, again, you see the evolution of Lara Croft. It's an origin story. And I just enjoy so much about this game. You know, upgrading your weapons. The multiplayer was okay. It's not the best part of the game, but it was still fun. You know, uh, it's, again, story, the animations, the voice acting, I thought was perfect for this game. Just the progression. Everything seems so natural. The pacing. Everything, if, we're, if you, when you went here, it felt natural to go here. And then it's like, if I had one complaint, it's that, you know, it was kind of predictable when you were going to fall. About the only thing, which happens all the time in Lara Croft games. You fall, but I mean, and you get hurt, but that's okay. There's a really powerful moment where you, where you get stabbed and you have to cauterize the wound. I'm just like, oh! It's one of the better moments of that story. And it's, it's just... I love this game. It's the reason why it's my number one. I kind of almost regret trading it in now, talking about it. So, if you can get the new version, I could. <laughs> and also, oh, I don't know if you got there, but I won't spoil it. But the moment where you're in this river of blood. Oh yeah, that's that was amazing. I'm just like, oh, it's oh creepy as shit. All right, I had the Last of Us as my game of the year. Go figure. Big surprise, right? Um, yes. Just. Whenever I start playing this game, I can't stop. I, I just, I, it's so hard to just rip myself from this game. And, and I, I'm always like, man, I want to play that game. But no, I got so many other games I want to play, so I'm going to do something else. But, that, that, I mean, that kind of speaks to the power of this game. You never want to stop playing it. I mean, you just want to play through it 4,000 times. Even when it's the same thing the entire time you play through, there's no decision thing in this game or anything. It's the same thing every time yeah. you play through the game, you still want to keep playing. Yeah, because you want to go back to that world. You want to go through that story. You, you, it, 
this game is fun, too. I mean, it, we talk a lot about the world and the story, but this game is really, really fun. It's brutal as shit. I mean, just taking uh, a, a human or a, a clicker or uh, runners and just smashing their head into, you know, the side of a table or curb stomping them. It, it's... You get this feeling, but then you're almost like, wow, that's not really right. I feel kind of weird. Um, but this game is creepy. It's gorgeous. It, it, it has everything that you want in a fucking game, in my mind. It, it has the best story of this year. It has the two best... I mean, there's multiple characters that are phenomenal. But in my mind, the two best characters of uh, 2013. Um, and I say two because... You know, they kind of go hand-in-hand with Joel and Ellie. The voice acting is amazing. The the animations that they did for them. It, it just... The whole journey is just something that just pulls at you the whole time. And you... I mean, the first time you play it, you're just like... I, I can't stop. I want to, you know, see what's next. I think I started this game. I played it, you know, about two, two different times. And then I literally sat down one day and beat the fuck out of it and I couldn't stop um, it's just it's a good game man you really have to play it David if you, if you have it you're loved David's good too David David's yeah. good Tess, the bad guy and, Tess uh, is good for a uh, small yeah. amount of time it's just Wyoming right yeah I think that's where yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Tess is okay I didn't feel too attached to Tess I didn't <laughs> Marlene, I did not care about Marlene. Marlene is a bitch. I didn't even think that. I just didn't care about her. <laughs> like I, I, you know, she lived or died. I didn't care. I was expecting her to die eventually. Really quick, what is an honorable mention? I bet you. Honorable mention. I would easily give it to like Diablo three. The only reason that it might not have made it on this is because I haven't played enough. I've had I've played it twice. But, I mean, I had extreme amounts of fun the two times that I played it. So, that's really, if it's a new game, so that's about it. I wouldn't really say that in honorable mention. I didn't play a ton of games this year, and I picked the best of the best that I could have played. For me, it's Pokemon X and Y, or Diablo 3. Hard to pick. Uh, still really good. Actually, I'm sad. I should have made my Game of the Year Call of Duty Ghost. Fuck. Fuck. It's All not right. like you've never played that before. Have a nice day. Yeah.